Soft practice 7.11, questions number 1. The diagram on the right shows the locus of a moving point P that touches the X axis at a point and is of fixed distance from a point A, 3, 4. Finds the equations of locus of P. So here the locus touches the X axis at a point. So let's say this is the point. So this means the X axis will be the tangent. And when we draw a straight line from that point to the point A, which is the center, here it will be 90 degree. So based on the Y coordinate of the point A, the distance from A to the touching point here will be 4 unit. So the distance from any point P to the A will equal to 4 unit as this is the radius. So for this case, we know that the distance PA is equal to 4. To find the distance PA, we're going to let the coordinate A here as the x1, y1. So the distance will be the square root of x minus 3 square plus y minus 4 square. And this is equal to 4. So next, I'm going to square both sides to remove the square root. So on the left hand side, straight away, I'm going to expand the x minus 3 square. So you're going to get x square minus 6x plus 9. And for the y minus 4 square, you're going to get y square minus 8y plus 16. This is equal to 4 square, which is 16. So on both sides, we are having positive 16. So we can cancel the 16. Then... I'm going to rearrange these equations so it will be x squared plus y squared minus 6x minus 8y then plus 9 so this is equal to 0 and we cannot simplify this anymore then this will be the equations of the locus of p questions number two point p move such that it is always the same distance from the point q at 7 and r 11 4 Point S move such that its distance from point T, 7 at is always 5 units. The locus of point P and the locus of point S intersect at two points. A, find the equations of locus of point P. So based on the information in the first sentence, the locus P will be a straight line which is perpendicular bisector to the straight line RQ. So here the distance PQ is equal to the distance PR. To find the distance PQ, I'm going to let the point Q here as the x1, y1. So the distance will be the square root of x minus at square plus y minus 7 square. And to find the distance PR, I'm going to let the point R here as the x1, y1. So the distance will be the square root of x minus 11 square plus y minus 7 4 square. So next, I'm going to square both sides to remove the square root. So next, I'm going to straight away expand the x minus at square. So it will be x square minus 16x plus 64. And when you expand the y minus 7 square, you're going to get y square minus 14y plus 49. So this is equal to expand the x minus 11 square. You're going to get x square minus 22x plus 1 to 1. And expand the y minus 4 square. You're going to get y square minus 8y plus 16. So on both sides, we're having the same value for the x square and y square. So we can cancel it. So next, we're going to move everything to the left-hand side. So start with the negative 22x. So negative 16x plus 22x, we're going to get positive 6x. Followed by the negative at y. So it will be negative 14y plus at y. So this is equal to negative 6y. Then we're going to move the 1 to 1 and the 16 which has a total of 137. And on the left hand side, we have the total of 64 plus 49, which is equal to 113. Then minus the 137, you're going to get negative 24. Then this is equal to zero. 
So for this equation, we are able to simplify it by dividing every term with 6. So the equation will be x minus y minus 4 equal to 0. Questions B show that the locus of point S is x squared plus y squared minus 14x minus 16y plus 88 equal to 0. So based on the information that I highlight here, the locus S will be a circle with the center T and the radius is equal to 5. So here the distance ST is equal to 5 units. To find the distance ST, we're going to let the point T here as the x1, y1. So the distance ST will be the square root of x minus 7 square plus y minus x square. So this is equal to 5. So next, I'm going to square both sides to remove the square root. So on the left hand side, straight away, I'm going to expand the x minus 7 square. So I'm going to get x squared minus 14x plus 49. And when you expand the y minus x squared, you're going to get y squared minus 16y plus 64. So this is equal to 25. So next, I'm going to rearrange this equation and move the 25 to the left hand side. So I'm going to get, you're going to get x squared plus y squared minus 14x minus 16y then 49 plus 64 minus 25 you're going to get positive at the end then this is equal to zero question c finds the coordinate of the intersection point of the two loci so from the questions a we know that the locus p is a straight line with the equations x minus y minus 4 equal to zero and from the questions B, the locus S is a circle with the equation x squared plus y squared minus 14x minus 16y plus at the end equal to 0. To find the two intersection point, then we're going to solve this using the simultaneous equations. So here I'm going to let the equations of the locus P as equation number 1 and the equation in the locus S as equations number 2. So from equations number one, I'm going to let the x to become the subject. Then x will equal to y plus 4. Then this will be my equations number three. So next, I'm going to sub equations number three into equations number two. So the x here, we're going to replace it with y plus 4. So bracket y plus 4 square plus y square minus 14 times y plus 4 minus 16y plus at the end this is equal to 0. Then we're going to expand the y plus 4 square. We're going to get y square plus at y plus 16 plus y square. Then we're going to expand this minus 14y then minus 56 minus 16 y plus at the end this is equal to zero so here we're going to solve for the like terms so y square plus y square we're going to get two y square and positive at y minus 14 y minus 16 y this will equal to negative 22 y and for 16 minus 56 plus 88 this is equal to positive 48 then this is equal to 0 so for this equation I can simplify this so I'm going to divide every term with number 2 then I'm going to get y square minus 11y plus 24 equal to 0 so here we can factorize these quadratic equations so it will be y minus 3, another bracket will be y minus n equal to 0. So y is equal to 3 and y is equal to n. So next, we're going to substitute the y equal to 3 and the y equal to n into the equations number 3. So the first x will be when we substitute the y with 3, we're going to get 3 plus 4. Then the x is equal to 7. 
and the second x will be x equal to 8 plus 4. So this is equal to 12. So the two coordinate of the intersection point will be 7, 3 and the other coordinates will be 12, 